Welcome to this short discussion about floating foundations in Chicago architecture construction and caisson foundations or pile foundations. My name is Jim Janesey. This is part of the first year program at DePaul University. This course is Explore Chicago Architecture Through Digital Photography and this is one of several subjects that we're taking a look at in connection with Chicago architecture. Here is a kind of a cartoonish picture of a small steel frame building. The steel frame is illustrated by these red members painted steel perhaps being used in construction and what you see here is a typical way that early steel frame buildings were constructed. The uh, building is held up by a foundation that consists of kind of a raft of maybe steel beams embedded in concrete or even railroad ties and railroad track as in the auditorium building and the steel members stretch all the way down to that foundation. The purpose of this foundation is to spread the weight of the building evenly. If these steel members just poked into the ground they would sink. They don't have much surface area and the uh, they would just sink right into the ground so they the foundation had to be broadened and finally uh, uh, John Wellborn Root I came up with the idea of having a foundation that was continuous, perhaps even spread out past the edge of the building, so that somehow the entire weight of the building borne by these steel members would be spread. And if if the architect were lucky, then the the moisture in the ground and the uh, the uh, softness of the ground in various areas wouldn't vary too much down here in the dirt and this building was expected to settle but it might settle evenly if they were lucky. Now there is a layer of bedrock underlying Chicago. It's uh, 40 feet down or perhaps further but there wasn't a very convenient way of reaching it uh, with the technologies available for excavation in the 1880s so many buildings were constructed this way and some did. Uh, they all settled and some settled in rather unusual ways. We have here the kind of settling that might have occurred if they were lucky. Notice I'll go back to the earlier slide. Here was the way the building was constructed and as the weight piled up on top it eventually might sink a few inches or in the case of the auditorium building the foundation walls are so heavy it sunk 29 inches. Now that's really pretty dramatic. However if they were not very lucky about things the building might sink something like this. In which case depending on the amount of uneven settling, things were kind of bad. And you will see some buildings like this. Uh, on Michigan Avenue there's one that's a notable slant to the window. On Wabash there's also another. And uh, some buildings attempted to correct for this by making cosmetic changes to the way the window frames worked and hoping that the building wouldn't settle any further. Uh, many of the old structures are now taken down because uh, the land became more valuable than uh, the rents that could be earned in such a small leaning structure and it was eventually demolished. Something better had to be done. Well let's take a look at a building uh, that had properly settled. Let's suppose it were constructed instead using a caisson foundation or some type of pilings that actually reach down to the bedrock. The bedrock is solid. It's not about to sink unless we have a major earthquake and then it's all up for grabs. So the bedrock is where tall buildings have to be anchored the taller they went the heavier they got and the less stable they would become if you tried to float them as this building indicates. So here's what was done. Around 1900 they were experimenting with this. It actually got perfected into the 1920s as buildings reached even higher than 18 stories. This sort of construction adds columns here which are unseen. They've been drilled through the earth and perhaps they've been spread out where they contact the bedrock but th these are concrete columns that can bear a lot of weight and in order to strengthen them further steel cages, reinforced steel is put into here. So these caissons reach all the way from the level of the earth down to bedrock and that's actually what the steel members rest on. So whether the earth shifts a bit under this it has no consequence whatsoever because the real weight of the building is being borne by the bedrock here. And all the large structures you see in Chicago, anything above 18 stories or so, and uh, frankly any modern construction even like the L. When the the new platforms were put in at the Fullerton stop, caissons were used all the way down to bedrock to make the L a lot more sturdy than uh, perhaps taking the chance that a floating foundation might sink unevenly in various areas.